For over a century, members of the California Federation of Teachers have fought for quality public education, always standing together through thick and thin. Ours is a history of grassroots activism and of visionary leaders who stepped out of their classrooms and work sites to fight for better working conditions and for our students, our schools, and our communities. The power and promise of public education inspired us to become educators, school workers, and also advocates and leaders. We have worked hard to obtain dignity and respect, full funding for our schools and colleges, and for social, racial, and economic justice. We have always understood the necessity to work hand in hand with our brothers and sisters in the labor movement. Today, as we face great challenges and the future of public education is in flux, we can look back on our history with pride. Before CFT was founded in 1919, teachers had to work long hours for little pay with harsh work and personal rules, especially for women who were the majority of teachers in the elementary grades. Irish immigrant Kate Kennedy was the first known union activist in California public education. There was no teachers union. She belonged to the Knights of Labor, the first important national labor organization in the United States. In 1874, she led the fight to pass a state law guaranteeing educators equal pay for equal work. But to get around the law, school administrators kept elementary school wages lower for the mostly female teachers and higher for the mostly male teachers of secondary schools. Across the country in 1900 in Chicago, elementary teacher Margaret Haley demanded that schools be fully funded through progressive taxation and worked with the Chicago Federation of Labor to sue corporations that refused to pay their share. She inspired a new generation of teachers to organize. Some of them were the founders of the American Federation of Teachers in 1916. Three years later, eight local unions in California founded the California State Federation of Teachers to work for collective bargaining. The new statewide union boasted nearly 800 members an early victory came in 1921, when the CSFT took the lead in passing one of the first teacher tenure laws in the country. The first decades of the Federation were challenging ones. The reactionary political atmosphere of the Roaring Twenties and deep-seated prejudices against women, unions, and teachers' organizations took their toll. By 1929, membership had fallen to a few hundred and only seven locals still remain. While industrial workers were able to organize successfully for the first time during the Depression, teachers were hit hard, facing layoffs and school closings. But they held on and were encouraged by the support of prominent figures like UC Berkeley professor Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb and an active member of CSFT. During World War II, the Federation hit a new low. Membership dropped and the AFT revoked its charter. At this critical moment, a new president, Oakland teacher Ed Ross, committed the union to an ambitious organizing program. And as membership grew, its charter was restored. Following World War II and the Korean War, many returning veterans took advantage of the GI Bill and became teachers. They had fought to defend democracy, and now they demanded better working conditions and pay. Among these teachers were future CFT leaders Raoul Tillet and Miles Myers. The reinvigorated Federation grew steadily and became known for defending teachers' rights during the McCarthy era in the 1950s. Leading the fight was the new head of CSFT, El Cerrito High School teacher Ben Rust. Rust fought for teacher rights against the Red Scare and to build the union into a stable organization. 
a Kaiser shipyard carpenter during the war, he championed the idea of teaching as craft and oversaw the first legislative proposals for teacher collective bargaining, as well as the passage of the first statewide law prohibiting racial discrimination in hiring in public education. The CSFT had struggled, survived and grown during its early years, and by 1960, it was poised for its most important battles.